Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Laura from Diamond Painting and Stitching with Laura. How's everybody doing? I hope good. Um, today I am going to do... I'm not an expert. Let, let's just start with that point. Uh, somebody asked me if I would do uh, a video on how I start a cross stitch. Today I'm using the Joy Sunday... Hang on. Got it. Whoop, went the wrong way. My bad. This is a Joy Sunday cross stitch kit, and I got it from Amazon. I bought the four seasons. There was winter, summer, spring, and fall. And they are all 11 count, and this one is 34 by 34 centimeters. And they wanted me to show how I started a stamped cross stitch. Now, this one in particular... It has all the symbols along the bottom, and I like Joy Sunday because it's clear and concise, and usually, okay, the birds, we're not talking about the birds because they're in a timeout, so they're out of my brain. And so this, it says full stitches at this end, and then over here, it says back stitches. So it lists the color number, the symbol, and the DMC number. Now, when you receive your kit, it's going to come like this. And they're all numbered all the way across. This ha happens to have 20 colors. Comes with your two needles that you're going to need to stitch with. Not a problem. And um, usually, the first thing that I do when I open a kit, haven't done it with this, is I bought these snack bags at the grocery store they come 90 in a box they also come in like 25 or 15 or whatever so that you don't have to buy so many but I had so many things to do I just bought the big box so this is like the fourth box that I've actually been through so whatever your grocery store will carry snack bags because kids use them for school lunches I'm assuming don't know my kids didn't ever take school lunches all right so I would take each color out take a bag I guess I don't have one out and I would write with a oh sure well pretend this is a sharpie and I would put number one or whatever and it's easier with a sharpie because and make sure it's dry before you go stacking them together but usually takes a few seconds and put like number one and then I put, sometimes these kits, this has a number. So 5940, I will put that on this corner. And that way I know it goes with that specific kit. And that number, well, this says K. Okay, so the number here, I'm sorry, is K943. I would put that on the baggie. And also, I, after I get them all bagged up, depending on the size of the kit, I put them into either a quart or a gallon Ziploc bag. If you want something fancier, go for it. But this is the easy way, and it's not very expensive. And if you don't know that you want to do this, don't spend a whole lot of money on accessories and all that. Yeah, they're cool. They're great. But if you don't want to do it, what's the point? I'm sorry. I, I don't like to waste money, and I try to help my subscribers save money so um let's see where was I so I put all the the colors in their appropriate bag put them in there and then when it's done this whoa hang on I gotta put this needle away I had it in my hand um what I like about this kit is that it comes with everything you got your canvas you got your colors and it comes with a bag to put it back in. This is fairly substantial. So I would put the Ziploc bags back into this along with the pattern and my canvas. And it's all together. And then I would write on the outside of the Ziploc bag that it's the winter one and it's K943 and it's Joy Sunday. I know because... I usually don't buy anything but Joy Sunday. I haven't gotten 
to dimensions. I haven't gotten to anything else. But it all comes together when you buy it. And you even get two needles to start with. To, and that way, it's all there. You don't. There's no guesswork. And one little tiny suggestion, because I didn't follow my own uh, suggestion. If you've never done this before, don't get anything huge. Okay? Um, get something. This is not very big. And it's spaced out. You know, it's not like it's a full coverage. This is going to be what I call a partial. Um, so the background will be white. And then you just stitch. But everything's laid out for you. And I suggest Joy Sunday because they are so concise. It comes with... I won't show it to you, but it's all on one page, okay? But it has a, your chart is here. So in case, for some reason, usually they're clear and concise. Um, all your symbols are in here. Everything is usually clear. You can see it, but if for some reason, some silly reason, you can go back and look on your chart and the charts are beautifully they're not they're in color they show you exactly where it is what to do it's all gridded out even the grid is along this side and the top so that when you go to look at your pattern it's in the pattern as well okay so it's a good beginner thing you know, because it is all laid out. Let me get all this crap out of my way because I got way too much stuff under my elbows. So anyway, back to how we start. Okay, let me get rid of that. Get that out of my way. Oh, man. Now, this same subscriber asked me to demonstrate how to do that loop method of stitching. I don't use it. I know how to do it, but with three strands. Now, on 11 count, you're supposed to use three strands, depending on whatever the thread is, because this is cotton, so we're just going to go with that. Three strands on 11 count, and two on a 14 count. Um, I have not followed those rules. Not very well. Um... And I won't be demonstrating how to do that loop method, but I can show you another method. But know that it's not something that I do. Okay, so I'm going to start with this blue. So my symbol, in each square, there's this blue line. Or not each square, but for that color. So we're going to get out a strand of number three. Now, there's not too many of them. So, I'm just going to get a piece that's probably 14 inches, and I'm going to separate my thread, and I just take it apart, three in this finger, three in that finger, and then I turn it over. Some people pull that, and mine ends up in a knot every time. So, I put my thumb in the triangle, and I got the other part of the thread in my fist. And I'm just going to keep working and pulling. And then you move your hands up and grab it again in this part. And just pull them apart if you need to. And it stops. Don't, don't yank on it because you'll get a knot. Trust me. And grab it again. Put your two fingers in there just like you're going to cast on for knitting. And then it comes right apart. And then just set it over there lightly. Okay, so we got three strands. Now, where's my needle? All right. So yesterday I was watching Diamond Painting with Esk, 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 Exes. I can't say that. I'm sorry. Esk Sees. If I could just get it out. She says it so much better. I'm, I know that word is supposed to be for Eskimos because she has those beautiful little white dogs. They're so charming. I love them. They're so cute. All right. So she said something yesterday and it was a game changer for me uh, and, and an eye opener. And so I thought I'd pass this along in case you hadn't seen that video. She said, 
because she was starting one. Um, that there's two sides to a needle. I had no clue that there was two sides to a needle. My whole life. And I've been doing this since I was about six. Didn't know this. Okay, so if you go to thread this and it doesn't go through. Let's say it doesn't go through. See how it, it gets all weird? Just turn the needle around. Because there are two sides to a needle. And oh god, I think I oh, yep, I knew I turned it one too many. And if I could hang on to it. I put on hand lotion today. It will thread right through the needle. Now, if for some crazy reason that doesn't work for you, hey, doesn't work for everybody. I understand that. I will, I'm, I'm a concept of it don't work for everybody. Okay, so I have a needle threadle, threader. I got these from Amazon. They came in a pack of, oops, sorry, my bad. You knew I had to hit that, right? Okay, let's hit it four times. Sorry. Came in a pack of 50 of them, and it wasn't too expensive. I'd say five bucks or less. Just guessing because I can't remember. But I keep losing these because they're very flat. And they lay on my thing. And if I miss, they drop and they're they're off to oblivion. I have a black hole of Calcutta down here on my floor. Okay, so you have a small hook on this side. And you have a bigger hook on this side. And that is for a bigger needle. Like if you were going to thread yarn. But we're going to thread thread. So you put it through the thing. Just like that. And it looks like that. Can you see that? I hope. Okay. Then we're going to take our thread. And I hold it between my two fingers. Like so. And I hook it on. Now I'm holding it again with two fingers. My fingers are on the needle. And my other hand is on this and you just kind of wiggle it a little bit and pull and voila the needle is threaded so that is how that goes now normally because I'm not I'm not me personally I don't care what this this back looks like at all to me it makes no never mind I'm not that fussy Okay, so we're going to start at the top, and this is over here on this edge. Now, mind you, I did not put a knot at the end. So, and this material here is, whoops, kind of stiff. I forgot I didn't have a knot. I'm sorry. See, I told you I'm not used to that. So, I'm going to pull it up. And for me, this is a lot easier than that loop thing. I'm going to leave a tail. And it's about, we're going to make it, because God knows my hand will move. I'm going to make it about an inch long. It doesn't really matter, but it's laying right there. So that when we stitch, it is going to cover it up. Now these are pretty big holes and I do the on top method you go across oh, I thought I cut them and you just stitch now, normally, I will pull out, like I said, this has got six strands in your thread, so I'm using one of the three, and this is the second of the three. I will go through, and this isn't a big area, so I've got way, like, way too much thread, and I'll show you with what I do with it when I finish. So I just stitch all of those that are that bring you 
in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. <coughs> Sorry, my throat is dry. Hang on, I gotta have a drink of coffee. But it doesn't matter what color you start with. Some people like to start with number one, just like diamond painting. They like to start with number one and work their way, you know, do all of number one. Or all of, and all of two and three and four and all the way across. I just start in one corner because... Okay, here's what's going to happen. After you've handled this a while, it's not going to be as stiff. And I like working, so I will do all of these right here in this little little area. And right, like, and then these colors. And just work my way gradually across. And that is getting this broken down so it's not so stiff. But if I went... For me, if I went and did all the ones, there's some over here, some over here, and some over there. Then I got to fight this whole thing, you know. And it's for me, it's easier to just work in one one part, and then, um, you know, go on. And it makes you feel like you've made some kind of progress. For me, it does. weird. These these kids are so funny. Cuz it's got this dark blue that runs along the edge, but yet these few stitches, these this row right here in particular sticks out nowhere else. Oh, maybe over here on this corner. I don't understand. It's weird. Now, I haven't finished one of these so, I can't tell you what the next step is. I can tell you what the next step is. I'm just saying that I just stitched the wrong thing. Um, the next step, step would be to, after you get all your stitching done, all your back stitch, everything, you put it in warm water and all this color everywhere. It'll be a white canvas except for, you know, behind it and everywhere, except for where you stitched. But I have never gotten to that part. So, because some of my projects are kind of big and just not happening. Now, I don't know. Anyway. So... Let's say I finished with this color. Now, since it is still on the card over here, you can see where I got it off. Everything's... I just kind of straighten it out. The reason I don't leave it on this is because after a while this becomes a mess for me. It's just... It's like a one huge freaking knot. Now, some people hang these up so that they hang. I, I don't have any place to hang it. So, now I have my extra thread. Where did it go? So, I would take the thread that I had left over for temporary. You know, this is temporary. And I'm just going to tie a loose knot very loose and attach it to the strings that are hanging of the different colors that way when I go to get that color again all I have to do is slip it off and untie it okay if it's my baggie I just put the loose leftover right in the baggie separated you know from this and it doesn't get all knotted up but I just I can't stand this. The, this after whoops, after a while, this whole it looks beautiful, but I'm just not a neat person, so that's why I like to separate them all and put them all in 
their own separate baggie and go from there. Now you can see, I hope, where I've stitched. And the point of this is that it covers your canvas so that there's no white afterward. And I want to make one suggestion that you, because I've learned this from experience. I'm not, I'm having a problem with the bird thing that I had the other day. If I went and stitched, this is the, the same symbol, all this, and then tried to put it all in there, it's very hard for me to stitch. Now, I don't have good hands. My hands are 62 years old. So, if you've got better hands than mine, kudos. Um, I would just go, like, to the next color. And because it's going to be tight. For me, it's tight. I don't pull my thread real tight. I just make it lay down. Now, this is just my opinion, just the way that I do it. And some people are more finicky than others. You know, hey. Um, I'm just showing you today how I do these things. So, when I finish with this color, I will go and find, say, the, this half triangle, you know, because there's only about three or four of them right there. And then there's a few right there. But just work it one color at a time, I mean, in an area. And I think it, it goes better for me might not for you um and these are just suggest suggestions my opinion and not saying that it's right and wrong but this is how i do it so i don't know whatever and and i'm learning as i go too you know and one thing i like about Joy Sunday, let me see if I can get the, is that it comes with this instruction book, or instruction page, I should say, and it shows you how to read your pattern, and how to, you know, find the color on the chart, or their chart, or, you know, the chart chart thing I showed you, and it shows you how they're all here, how to sew, how to wash it, what to do afterwards, how to iron it, and block it. I was looking to see. So, you know, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is there's... There is a right and a wrong, but it's whatever you feel comfortable with, basically. And this is just the way that I do it and work on them. I probably got 20 of these things started, but it's just all in what I wanted to work on, you know, for this time of year. I wanted to do Christmas or, or winter stuff. And sometimes I just need color. So I just pick out my most colorful canvas and just get started. And I'll probably work on it a week or two. And I might put it away. You can put it away. Nobody says you have to sit here and do this and do this and do this until it's done. You can start something else. Because why be miserable? This is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be relaxing. So, you know, you take it at your pace. And if it's not working for you, work on something else for crying out loud. There's nobody standing over your shoulder. You're big girls. You can do this. And you might be young girls. Do whatever you want to do. You know, like I said, I started cross-stitching when I was about six, seven years old, and it nothing was like this. It was all on, um, what do you call it, like um, sheet material, if you will, <coughs> excuse me, and they were printed in a, mon you know, like a blue color, 
and you just did the cross stitches. And the cross stitches, I swear, were probably eh, a third of an inch. You know, they were huge. So you start big, and you had to do that really light, you know, like pulling your thread real easy because you didn't want to knot it all up. I mean, there was stuff I had to take out way back. I oh, hey, I'm still taking stuff out because I mess up. But, uh, and this, I think the kits give you an easier start because those back in the day, you had to go pick out your colors. You know, I mean, usually I picked out something floral, you know, and so I wanted the, the roses to be one, two colors and I wanted the, um, the stems of the roses or whatever. And I was also doing, um, different embroidery stitches. I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Um, and you can still find these patterns. I mean, from way back. And so that, that's how I started. And now this is so much easier. All your colors are picked out for you. It comes with a needle. It comes with a canvas. Everything's printed on it. Yeah. You know, it's my best suggestion for anybody starting cross stitch and start with an 11 count. Don't start with anything any smaller because you can see it. It's easier and it shows your pro progress pretty fast, you know. So that that's all the opinions and advice I've got for everybody today. And I hope this was helpful and it helped people. And don't be afraid of it. It's just a cross stitch. You're only making one stitch. And you go, and some people even go just in one direction, you know, like one part of the cross. So you can see I made those two stitches. Where are we? Here we are. Um, and then they'll come back and make the other part of the X. It's all up to you. And you'll learn things as you go along. I suggest that you watch massive, you know, not massive, but um, other floss tubers and see how they do it because they're not going to do it the same way I do it. Um, and not everybody does. But you'll find your own rhythm and what works for you. And I don't use a hoop. Because this material is stiff enough to hang on into your hand, you're not, you don't, there's no danger of pulling the thread really tight, you know, and scrunching your fabric up. I really have to watch it. If I've been doing a lot of cross stitch, I have to watch it when I do my beaded cross stitch. Um, because that fabric is really loose and limp to, compared to this. So, I hope this has helped everybody, you know, today. If you uh, like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the comment section. And I'll try to answer it. If I don't know an answer, I will go looking for an answer. But thank you for joining me today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and please hit the bell. And that way you'll know when my next video comes out. Y'all have a good day. God bless. Bye-bye.